Hey kids, it is kids class. It is Sunday morning. Grab your Bibles. We're going to get started. But before we do, let's say a word of prayer. Wanted to say really quickly too, um, we do, I'm planning on doing these videos for um, these weeks ahead. For uh, those of you who are still not able to come to church, you are more than welcome to watch these videos uh, for the time being. But um, hopefully, Lord willing, I will see some of you at church and we'll glorify the Lord together. And uh, we got everything wiped down and sanitized and I can't wait to see some of you who will be there. And if you're not, don't worry. Enjoy this video and just draw closer to God and just focus on Him and His walk with you, okay? And we'll be together soon someday. All right, so let's pray. And one thing I'd like to ask you guys to do is please pray for pastor, give to that God would give him wisdom with our church and being the pastor over us and just that God would send revival to us as uh, his people, okay? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask and pray that you bless our time together, Lord. Please take uh, this tongue of mine, God, and just use me, Lord, for your honor and glory and praise, God. I pray, Lord, and ask that you would bless uh, the Sunday services, the live streams, the the videos, Lord. I just pray we would see, Lord, souls saved and lives changed, God, for your honor and glory. I pray that the children, Lord, would grow in faith, that they would know how the earth was created and that it was not created by evolution um, or by any man's ideas, but, Lord, your word. We need to find out what the Bible says, God. And I pray that the kids listening and watching and who are part of kids' class would want to know what the Bible says about everything. Please, Lord, I pray ask that you be glorified in all these things. In Jesus' name I pray, and everyone say it, amen. All right, so our first song, Isn't He Wonderful? Okay, so here we go. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, tis recorded in God's word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Let's do it again. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, tis recorded in God's word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? And guys, we know he's wonderful. And one thing I'd like to encourage you guys to do is every day, if there's something that comes up, the question you should always ask is, what does the Bible say? If someone asks you, what do you believe? Or if someone asks you, is lying wrong or murdering wrong? Or um, the different sins, are they wrong? And you should be able to say, hmm. What does the Bible say? Because some people will ask your opinion. But instead of giving your opinion, make sure that you're not giving your opinion, but you're saying what the Bible says. So if someone says, do you think lying's wrong? Well, I think the lying, that lying is wrong. Instead of saying that, you should say, the, well, the Bible says that it's an abomination. That the Bible says that lying is wrong and it's a sin against God's commandments. And because we can come up with whatever we want in our heads of what we think is right or wrong, but ultimately we know that God's word tells us what's right and wrong. So whenever those questions come up that people ask you, and uh, like for instance, you know, should we go to church? Should we not go to church? Should we be faithful to have that time with God each day? Well, what does the Bible say? Don't listen to what I say, okay? Um, as far as, oh, well, Miss McKenzie said this, no, make sure that you know, okay, no, that Miss McKenzie showed me God's word. This is what the Bible says. So make sure that when you share the gospel, uh, that you're saying, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says on how to get to heaven. And because we know guys that the Bible is God's holy word. It's precious and it's perfect. And we can learn from God's word. We can grow in our faith. But we have to get into God's word. We have to know what does the Bible say of the different things that we question. Okay? So let's do when I get to heaven. Because we are going to be learning a couple things about first day two of creation. We're going to find out what happened on day two of creation according to what the Bible says. And then we're going to talk about what the Bible says about heaven. Okay? So we're going to do when I get to heaven. These are some new songs, guys, so you can hum along or whatever, but I would like you to participate. I'll sing it again just so you guys can understand the message and the lyrics. So here we go. When I get to heaven, gonna walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, gonna see his face. When I get to heaven, gonna talk with Jesus. Saved by his wonderful grace because I'm... And this is where I want you guys to go, saved, saved, okay? Ready? Because I'm saved, saved. Wonderfully saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved, saved, 
wonderfully saved and I'm so glad I am hallelujah when I get to heaven gonna walk with Jesus when I get to heaven gonna see his face when I get to heaven gonna talk with Jesus saved by his wonderful saved by his glorious saved by his wonderful grace wasn't that new guys for you guys I hadn't heard that song in a long time and, and that song popped in my head and I just thought you know let's sing that song okay and let's see, well, let's do, hmm, let's do it one more time so you guys can learn it. So it goes, when I get to heaven, we're going to walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, I'm going to see his face. When I get to heaven, I'm going to talk with Jesus, saved by his wonderful grace, because I'm, and you guys are going to say, saved, saved, as loud as you can, okay? So here we go. When I get to heaven, gonna walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, gonna see his face. When I get to heaven, gonna talk with Jesus. Saved by his wonderful grace, because I'm saved, saved, wonderfully saved. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved, saved, wonderfully saved. And I'm so glad I am, hallelujah. When I get to heaven, gonna walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, gonna see his face. When I get to heaven, gonna talk with Jesus. Saved by his wonderful, saved by his glorious, saved by his wonderful grace. One of my favorite songs. I love that song. You guys, when we get to heaven, it's gonna be so wonderful, guys. And heaven is a wonderful place. So here we go. Heaven is a wonderful place, filled with glory and grace. I want to see my Savior's face, for heaven is a wonderful place. I want to go there. Heaven is a wonderful place, filled with glory and grace. I want to see my Savior's face, for heaven is a wonderful place. And there's another version, too, that you can do, and we can do them both together once we're together in person as uh, for kids' class, okay? So the other part goes like this. Oh, uh, let's see. When I get to heaven, I'm going to walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, I'm going to see his face. When I get to heaven, I'm going to talk with Jesus. Say by his wonderful grace, because I'm saved, saved. I'm singing the wrong song. So here we go. Heaven is a wonderful place. Here we go. Ready? Heaven is a wonderful place filled with glory and grace. I want to see my Savior's face for heaven is a wonderful place. I want to go there. Heaven is a wonderful place filled with glory and grace. I want to see my Savior's face for heaven is a wonderful place. I want to go there. Just like that. And you can do it just like that. I got those songs. I messed up, guys. But anyhow, so yeah, so it, it goes into heaven is a wonderful place. And then the other person says heaven is a wonderful place. So maybe someday we'll do that together and you guys will be able to hear. One side will do heaven is a wonderful place while the other does heaven is a wonderful place. And we'll sound so beautiful together, guys. And we'll rejoice and just sing about heaven and how wonderful it's going to be. All right. Our last song, before we do our last song, we're going to do our Bible verse, okay? So, Genesis 1-1. One, one. So, repeat after me. Genesis 1-1. One, one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1-1. One, one. Let's say it again. Ready? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis 1-1. One, one. Good job. All right, and then we are going to do It Is God's World After All. Okay, so here we go. It is God's world after all. It is God's world after all. It is God's world after all. It is God's world. Sinner God so loved that he gave his son. Through his precious blood was the work all done. Now believe, Christ receive, and the battle is won. It is God's world after all. 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 It is God's world. It is God's world. It is God's world. Alright, so we're going to be going into our Bible lesson for today, guys. 
Here we go. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray God and ask that these children, Lord, their hearts would be ready in season to hear your word today. I pray for that person, Lord, who perhaps is watching is not saved. I pray, Lord, that they'd come to know you as Lord and Savior, Jesus, and receive your free gift of salvation, Lord Jesus, and that they would receive your forgiveness, God, that's waiting for them. Please, Lord. And all these things I ask, in Jesus' name I pray, and everyone say it, amen. All right, so here we go. So, first, we remembered, right, we talked about day one, when God spoke light into existence, and that we should also, what, keep our lanterns clean, for him so that way his light when we ask Jesus in our heart he is the light in our hearts in our life and he is that light that shines through us but when we let sin into our life and we're not obeying our parents or we're not having a good attitude or we're doing things and we're not obeying God's word our light the light of him grows dim with all the dirtiness kind of like I said about the lantern the lantern gets dirty and you got to make sure to wipe it clean every day we got to ask God to show us our sin because guys, our sin is ever before us. I mean, yes, Jesus washed away our sins, but we're still in the flesh and we're gonna struggle till we get to heaven someday. Heaven will be perfect. Sin won't be allowed to enter heaven. And that's why we have to ask Jesus in our hearts because Jesus paid the penalty for our sins because sin can't enter heaven. And we have to receive his forgiveness of sins. His blood washes away our every sin. And that's our only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. It's a gift that we receive from him okay all right so we are going to go to Genesis chapter 1 verses 6 through 8 Genesis chapter 1 verses 6 through 8 here we go and God said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. So literally, the evening and the morning. So we know that counts as one day. And so we know that this didn't happen over hundreds and hundreds and thousands of periods of time as evolution teaches us, but this literally says, okay, evening and morning, the second day, okay? And so... Um, so we see here that God talks about this and says, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. So there's waters and this firmament, this firmament divides the waters from the waters. And you're going to see, you're going to be like, what is, what is that talking about? But you're going to understand what that means, the dividing of the waters with the firmament, okay, above it. And um, I want to share something that is in my King James Study Bible that I think helps explain this as well. Okay. Firmament is an expanse between the waters suspended by God in vapor form over the earth. Most likely approximately half of the waters upon the earth were supernaturally elevated above the atmosphere, perhaps in the form of an invisible vapor canopy. This would have trapped the earth's heat with a greenhouse effect and would have provided a uniformly tropical climate the, let's see, everywhere until it collapsed upon the earth during the universal rainfall at the time of the great flood. This might explain the longevity described in Genesis chapter 5 in addition to providing a water source for the flood of chapters 9, let's see, chapters 6 through 9. So we know, okay, in, in the early book of Genesis, and I encourage you kids to read the book of Genesis. Start reading through the first few chapters and just make sure, and just make, make it part of your day to know how did God create the earth and create mankind and read through. And you're going to see that Adam and Noah and these men who lived back then lived a very, very long time. And this firmament that the Lord talks about and that the Bible speaks of, this firmament divided the waters, which we know as the ocean, okay? And then the firmament, and then there was the firmament, and then above was these waters. But that firmament was broken when when um when the great flood happened, and that great flood of the waters, and how how the whole earth was flooded with water, 
was that was broken and talking about that and how how it kind of caused a greenhouse effect so a lot of the dinosaurs that probably that lived prior to the flood okay as we know it were much bigger than probably they would look like going forward because when the earth when the great flood happened what happened is you guys are going to see that as the years went by in the Bible, you'll notice that the Bible, the people of the Bible, their years became less and less and less, and they were dying at a younger age than prior to that firmament in the great flood. And that's because, like it was saying, okay, it was separate. What I had just read about the firmament and longevity and all that, that's just notes from a man who wrote that. That's not part of the Bible. That's just him giving an explanation of the firmament for us. And, um, and you'll kind of see behind me of the picture of the earth and the firmament. You'll see how there's that separation. You'll see the clouds and the heavens above, right? The heaven above right there that's considered a heaven. Okay, but that's not the heaven that... God dwells in. That's not the heavens where the angels and the pearly gates are. It's just speaking of a heaven, um, of something above, right? And so we have that with the waters that were split and the firmament between that. And that's why the earth was so lush. That's why they had such longevity, which we know longevity is basically where you live longer, your body is healthy, and we know that our earth won't be perfect again until Jesus comes and takes over and becomes the king. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. But we have to wait for the millennial reign, the tribulation and the millennial reign to happen. And in that millennial reign, Jesus will reign. And we will be priests and kings throughout all eternity as well. And God promises rewards to those who are faithful to him in this life and who, those who await his return and look for him. And I want to encourage you with some Bible verses that talk about heaven. Now, these aren't all the Bible verses that um, are about heaven, but I just wanted to share a few of these to you guys. To you guys. Now, this heaven that we're going to talk about, that we're reading about in scriptures, is this. Uh, the heaven that I want to talk about now, because the, the Genesis talks about the heaven of, of a description of a heaven above, above the firmament, okay? And that's a description of that. But that's not considered the heaven, the heaven that the Lord God lives in with his um, kingdom and his angels that uh, will someday come down to earth and will be able to rule and reign and come in and out of the new Jerusalem. But this is what the heaven that we'll see someday when we go to heaven, when we die and we go to heaven or maybe Jesus will rapture us out. I want you guys to hear a little bit about this heaven about the heaven. Revelations 21 verse 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And guys, as we're going through creation, it's super important that we build our faith on knowing how God created the heaven and the earth. And we're going to learn more about Adam and Eve and what happened and why the sin, why the earth became cursed and why there's sin. We're going to learn that in days to come. And so I need you guys to be faithful to come and listen and grow in God's word as you grow, grow, grow. Okay. Verse John chapter 14 verse 2 says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Do you love him? Now, it's just so wonderful to know that God has wonderful things prepared for them that love him. But we should love him. Well, what does the Bible say? Remember, we should always ask that question. Well, what does the Bible say? Well, the Bible says that we are to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the wonderful thing is God doesn't make us do that. He gives you the choice. But, oh, my friends, let me tell you, he loves you so much. And when you understand his love for you, you can't help but love him. So let God change your heart into just 
and to just grow closer to him. And let me tell you, when you read God's word and you ask God to show you his word so that way you can love him more and know him more, he will. And your love for him will grow deeper as you learn more of him and what he did for us. Even though we don't deserve it, guys, we don't. He's so good to us. Revelations 22 verses 1 through 5 says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. So we won't need the light of the sun or a candle at all. There'll be no more night, guys. And it says, For the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And I also love what it says about the curse. Let's see if I can find it again. Sorry, guys. Okay, verse 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. You guys, there shall be no more curse. When Adam and Eve ate of that fruit, the curse of sin came on all men. And Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins so that we could be saved from that curse of sin. Because in the book of Romans, it talks about how the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So knowing that, Receiving Jesus' his free gift to salvation and accepting his forgiveness of sins and calling upon him and acknowledging the fact that we're sinners, Jesus promises us that gift of eternal life. And let's be faithful to thank him and praise him that we have a wonderful heaven to look forward to. And guys, when I've had family members who I know love the Lord and they ask Jesus in their heart, when they passed away, and they went home to be in heaven, it made heaven that much more sweeter, just knowing that I'll see my family someday in heaven. And I hope you do too. I hope, I hope that if you have family that's not saved, family that doesn't know Jesus, I pray and ask, and I hope, and I ask the Lord, that you guys please be a witness. Share God's love and let them know that there's going to be no more night in heaven. Heaven's going to be wonderful. We'll walk on streets of gold. There'll be that beautiful tree of life and a crystal beautiful river that will flow from the throne of God. Oh guys, can't you see it? It's going to be beautiful. It will be beautiful. So let's be faithful because this life is short here on earth and God calls us to live for him. What does the Bible say about living for him? Well, you've heard me say it. And you've heard me talk about the Bible, but you need to get into the Bible for yourselves. Ask God to help you hunger for God's word like you would bread or to eat or the treats you eat or whatever it may be. May God's word be more than just medicine, but dessert and meat and milk and everything. That Because God says we are to go to his word for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for learning of him and the history of how everything started. So remember this, what does the Bible say? And just remember that God has a wonderful place prepared for those who love him. He has a wonderful place prepared for all those who call upon him as Lord and Savior. And we have that wonderful hope, guys, someday. And with that, I want to close, guys. So we're going to pray, and you guys will be on your way for your day, okay? If you have never asked Jesus Christ in your heart, and you would like to ask Jesus in your heart today, you know that you're a sinner, and you, and you say, yes, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose again. If you believe that, Jesus says you shall be saved. If you believe and call upon the Lord, you shall be saved. And you can pray a prayer like this. Just believe with your heart, okay? 
You just repeat after me and just believe this with your heart. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and save me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me and rising again the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for the hope of heaven. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it with your heart, God says you shall be saved. And it's a wonderful, joyous occasion when you ask Jesus in your heart. Because once he's there, he's, he's there for good. You won't, ever, you won't ever lose your salvation. God says that you are safe within the palm of his hands. No, can, no man can pluck you out of his hands. You're safe within there. And just know that you are now God's child. And he loves you so much. And he desires to know you. So if you've asked Jesus in your heart and you don't have a Bible, please reach out to us because I'd love to give you one. And with that being said, for those of you who are saved, if you just want prayer to just draw closer to God and, and to hunger for his word and to want to know what the Bible says, then raise your hand and God sees and I'll pray for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I ask and pray, Lord, for these kids, Lord, that were part of kids' class today. Please, Lord, help them to not be scared, but to know, Lord, that death is simply a pathway into a wonderful home with you, Jesus, for us who are saved, for us who are Christians. Help these kids, Lord Jesus, to hunger after your word, Lord, and to desire to know what the Bible says about everything, God, that they would look to your word, that they would not doubt or get scared, but Lord, help them to stand firm upon your word, Lord, that they would be just in your word, loving your word, God, eating your word up and just drawing closer to you, Lord. Help all of us to do that, God. Help me to do that. Please revive us as a church, Lord. Help us to have an excellent spirit like Daniel, as we've talked about before. And Lord, help us, O oh God, to know that, Lord, we want to know what the Bible says and not what our textbooks say when it comes to evolution, God, that these kids, Lord, would know that your Bible is true and they can stand firm upon it, God. Help them, Lord, not to doubt or to stray. Help them to be faithful soldiers of the cross. And Lord Jesus, thank you for the hope of heaven someday. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we thank you for your goodness and love for us. And all these things I ask, and everyone say it. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone say it. Amen. See you guys all next time. Love you all.